afternoon or good morning, depending on what time zone you're in, where you're where you're calling into us at. But as Mike said, uh, I will be your presenter this afternoon, and yeah, I've got a few years' experience. I, as a matter of fact, a few of the guys on the team like to heckle me and say, Joe's seen it all in his years of experience. He's He's gone from pencils to PDM, and, and I'll admit it, There's the, that picture's got a couple years to it, so there's a few more gray whiskers. And I do remember starting on a drafting board back in the days before, well, we knew what CAD was, but there was no such thing as PDM. And who'd have ever thought? So we've all come a long way in, in the evolution of our electronics, and, and, and who'd have ever thought the PC would grow to the power we are doing with them today? But with that said, let me ask everybody a question, and no, you don't have to respond to this, but I just want to get the juices flowing and get you thinking. I want you to say, how do we do business regarding bills of materials? Now, I'm going to try and get the juices flowing with a couple ideas here, so let's think about that. So imagine if we were all going to buy that, that iconic, you know, Victor brand, which actually, now that I think about it, Woodstream is, is a customer of ours. They are a PDM and SolidWorks uh, user um, over here in Pennsylvania. But uh, think about going to the store, to the hardware store, wherever, and picking up some mouse traps because it's the, you know, that's that fall time. The little rodents are trying to come back in the house. Well, imagine if you were the manufacturer of those. We certainly don't go into the store, whether it's you know Home Depot or Lowe's or something, and say, I, I'd like to buy a package of mouse traps, but I want mine painted blue or painted green or whatever. We pretty much pick it up off the shelf and use it as is. So from an engineering perspective, if you work there and designing one of their many products for controls of rodents, you'd say, well, hey. Um, I, I, we engineer it, marketing and sales come up with some ideas, we're always coming up with, you know, no pun, in, okay, pun intended, you know, making a better mousetrap, maybe a more cost-effective one, easier to manufacture, whatever, maybe a safer one to the consumer for setting the trap, but it's all driven by engineering. We go through a design process, we make our models and our drawings and our bills and materials, and that is outputted to manufacturing. That's a very traditional path that many of us can relate to, whether you're building widgets, mousetraps, brooms, or whether we're, you know, putting men on the moon and designing product. A lot of times we say, well, it is very straightforward and, and CAD is master, we used to say in, in automotive and engineering controls that design and we push it forward from there. But we have a design that we build a bomb off of and force that through to the system. Well, let's spin it the other way around. Let's think of going to that you know same Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards, whatever, that big box store, and you're going to remodel your kitchen. Just going to spend a few dollars remodeling it. It's not going to take any time or cost. If anybody's ever been down this path, you know that I'm very much joking. <laughs> but let's think about that process of that kitchen cabinet. You know, we go in and we sit down and, and we start, you know, if you're like me or Mike, well, you're sitting down and we've already got some, some graph paper out and we've already drawn up. Heck, we've probably already got drawings, let's face it. We've already drawn it in SolidWorks and we know what our kitchen floor plan looks like. We know what we want for cabinets and islands and where the sink's going to go and where the microwave's going to go and all that. So we have an idea what we want, but that sales rep is working with us. And, and they're sketching that all up, and they're creating a bill of material. They're creating that quote for us of what they think those cabinets are going to cost and what that design of that kitchen is going to look like. Then it hits the manufacturer. So then it hits the engineering department where they can start saying, okay, we've got to figure out how to make all this fit because, as we all know, no two kitchens are alike. Well, that same problem applies where you say, ooh, wow, that's the inverse of the mousetrap mentality. Engineering was driving the design, but here the bill of materials are ahead of the engineering department receiving it. And all of a sudden, if you're in an industry like that, not necessarily making cabinets, but I'm sure many of you can in some way the idea of, oh yeah, do we get fed bills of materials from our customers, the upstream clients that are feeding us, and then we gotta figure out how to design it and make it work? Well, now all of a sudden, bills of materials are not being driven by engineering. They're being driven into engineering. So all of a sudden our conventional tools might not stand so strong anymore. So I want you to think using these two examples and how diverse they are, but from a bill of material perspective, they are greatly differing. So again, let's get the juices flow, flowing. Think about where you fit in, in your bill of material process and where does it fit in your grand scheme of things. Again, I think a tremendous amount of us may fall in that upper category, just like the folks over at Woodstream, but I know a lot of customers, and so does Mike, that are in that lower category, and it's the other way around. And how do we know it? Because there's a lot of other tools they start to come at us asking about. So that's what this conversation is about this, this afternoon or this morning. So 
Let's dig a little deeper. Tools in play. Well, right off the bat, we know SOLIDWORKS is in play because we're going to be modeling SOLIDWORKS whether the build of material is being driven by us or where it's being fed to us. Next one that's going to be involved is PDM. And some of you may have PDM professionals, some of you may have PDM standards, some of you on this call might not have PDM at all. So this is a very informational um, uh, conduit for you to start to understand what can PDM do for me. Well, then the last material or software we're going to cover some material on is SOLIDWORKS Manage. And Manage is, is again, it's a, we call it a bolt-on to the back of PDM. You've got to have PDM Professional to have SOLIDWORKS Manage because it augments that PDM and gives it some phenomenal strength above and beyond what it's already powerful at doing. So with that, we're going to start and focus on PDM for at least the, the first part of this uh, webinar here today. Bill of material types that can come out of PDM. Fundamentally, coming out of PDM, I'd like to say there's three ways. And these icons you see, you're going you're to see that pop up a little bit further when we actually get into the software. But the most fundamental one is computed bill of material, followed by what's called a SOLIDWORKS bill of material, and then lastly, named bill of materials. So those are the three types of bill of materials. Now, again, if you've got SOLIDWORKS, uh, or if you've got PDM Professional, you know you've got the ability, or hopefully you, you should know that, that if we taught you right, that you've got a computed bill of material, a SOLIDWORKS bill, and in Pro, you get that named bill. If you've got PDM Standard, well, you don't have the ability to do a named BOM, but you do have the other two. So that's where maybe it's, it's time to say, hey, uh, maybe there's some benefits that a named BOM is going to produce for you. But we start with those three types. So let's understand those a little more. So in a computed BOM, I have to say, a computed bomb is the default type that's selected when our, in our PDM vault view. Here I've got, interestingly enough, it's an assembly. Some of us would like, to, if we're really into weldments like I was in a prior life, I look at this and go, nah, this should have been a weldment and cut list, but it can be done as an assembly. But you see that default bomb type, it's just set it at bomb. There's no other item in the drop down. Well, what is it doing? For all practical purposes, it's showing me exactly what's in my feature tree. And, and I have to say, if you've got PDM, you know it because it is indeed the most widely used BOM type out there. Everybody that uses PDM knows that when I click on that Bill of Material tab, you know, that middle tab in there, when I click on that, I'm going to see a BOM appear, and maybe the columns are formatted nicely for whatever reason, for export purposes, but that column set is going to display exactly how we built that thing in SOLIDWORKS. Maybe we've excluded a few parts, maybe we've not, maybe there's some virtual parts, but it by far is the most widely used Bill of Material. Now, the next one gets into a SOLIDWORKS bomb. And believe it or not, there are some customers that, that don't understand this one, haven't used it that often, and there are some that greatly dig, dig deeper into this topic. Why? Because this one, notice in the drop-down, pick on, uh, say, that SOLIDWORKS drawing up top there, and I select the drop-down, and you see that, well, I have that BOM one we talked about a moment ago, the computed bomb, but when we look at the next one above it, we can see it's referencing the bill of materials that's actually on the face of the drawing. So now what I'm seeing in PDM is a bomb that matches the one that's on the face of the drawing. Okay, now that one, you say, okay, that's nice. It's, it's displaying what's on the face of the drawing, but where's the real benefit? Well, first off, the column set, it could be a little different. Right off the bat, I might see item numbers. That's new that I wouldn't see in a computed bill of material, but take it one step further. Maybe this is the perfect place where I say, well, I could add virtual parts. Well, if I added virtual parts to account for items that are in my assembly but not in my assembly, meaning grease, paint, powder coat, e-coat, Loctite, some of those, you know, you know we all, we've all bought Loctite before, and imagine when we buy it in a little one-ounce bottle, it costs us a few bucks at the auto parts store. Imagine buying it by gallons if you're making, you know, hundreds of thousands of assemblies that require it to tighten fasteners. Well, we know it's actually gotten so bad a lot of our fasteners actually come with a Loctite patch on them. It's an expensive additive. Well, manufacturing might say they want that, especially when it comes to those finishes, you know, and I rust preventatives. I want an e-coat or a powder coat or just paint. So I could put those on the face of my drawing. I don't necessarily have to build virtual parts. I could put it on the face of the drawing, editing that bill of material table, or maybe a more rational approach would be spare parts. Maybe they always lose a part when they're assembling this and it's a really small fastener and it just gets away from them at the, at the job site. Well, then maybe we want to add extra parts. We could add it to that bomb table on the face of the drawing. And I'm not one. I'm old school. I always was raised with the idea, you don't fake that bill of material table. 
Whatever it is, it is. Well, there, here's a perfect example where you might want to edit that bond table. So food for thought, that second one starts to have some strength, maybe some needs for some of our customers. Now we're going to go into the third one, named bill of materials. Now, name bill of materials, okay, I pick on the file, it's a SOLIDWORKS assembly, and you can see down here, I, over to the right in the red circle, I do a save as. Well, when I do the save as, okay, I go ahead and save a named bill of material, and you can see down there in the bottom left where I've actually got a 227.slds.m1.bom. It has physically made a named bill of material, and it shows up in the drop down under that assembly. I have created another named assembly off of this 227 SOLIDWORKS assembly. Those blue lines are, are perfect indicators to tell me it's ready for me to start fully editing it. I go down in there and that's where I can build that bill of material and really tear it up. I'm not doing it inside SOLIDWORKS in the feature tree like I would be initially with a, uh, my first bill of material, but now when I go into my SOLIDWORKS bill of material, well, I could do it in the bomb table like you said there, or I could stay right inside PDM and do it here. So the other thing to memorize, well, not memorize here today, there's too many things to memorize today. But notice over to the right, and that's why Mike's recording this, is over to the right, you're going to have an extra menu. You know, you look up top and you can see over by your save as, there's always a few icons we're used to, our compare and our export, our help menu. But all of a sudden you get a few extra menus when your items in your menu bar over to the right when you're in a name bill of material. And we're going to play with a couple of those when we get into the, the live side of things. So again, three types of bill of materials in PDM giving us an offering of how to deal with that design process, how to get that bomb more manufacturing representative and get it off of the shop floor. Computed bombs, SOLIDWORKS bomb, or named bomb. So let's go ahead and see it in action a little bit. So I'll jump up my vault view, and of course I see the green folder. So those of you already in PDM land, you know exactly what those mean. I'm live and logged into my vault. For those that are not, we always jokingly say the yellow folders is Windows. When you're in green, you're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. We're in a PDM vault. We're into cool toys. So we're over here inside my PDM vault. I'll go down to 227 assembly, and sure enough, there's that computed bill of material. You know, I'm taking a look at exactly how that feature tree is looking in SOLIDWORKS. Now, I hit that drop down. Oh, I got a named bill of material. Now watch my menu bar over here to the right. That's going to bone up a little bit. I'm going to click on that named bill of material. All of a sudden, I've got some extra capabilities over here. Well, the first one is, Ooh, I can check out that bill of material, and ooh, I can switch that view. So, all right, I'm going to switch that view, and now I'm taking a look at how many named bombs I have in my vault or in my project folder, and I'm seeing I've got a couple of them. One of them's checked out by me already, but this 227 is not checked out. So we're going to go ahead and check it out, and there's those blue boxes we saw in the PowerPoint slides. And now it's ready for me to manipulate this bill of material as I see fit. You can see I already added a grease line item down here, or maybe I wanted to, you know, just a single unit. Maybe a unit's a quarter ounce or something. Oh, got some orange. You know that orange means modified. Yep, I added some couple spare parts for that fastener. Customer's always complaining that he's missing some. He loses them in the bag. Maybe they're loose shipped parts. They're not, a, you know, actually attached to a, a screw or a bolt. Same thing with this one. No, they're smaller, not too small. M6 fasteners, you know, a little bigger than a quarter inch, not a problem. So I'm taking a look at these. All right, I got some, some spare parts I've thrown in. I've got that grease, but it's quite simple. I mean, I could literally say, well, maybe that track tensioner needs to have some, some paint or e-coat or powder coat. I could literally say insert, and I could put a child row underneath there, and now I'm adding maybe it's a specific part number. Maybe it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and, it, and it's for, you know, powder coat. So now I'm adding a line item. Now this is obviously for, for demo purposes. I'm not getting real critical on exactly the quantity or how it should be added, but I'm adding line items to this bill of material. I'm editing this bill of material as we need to get business done and get this thing out to the shop for a little more realistic than just engineering. I was in engineering my whole life, so I don't mean to insult engineering, but let's face it, we care about the design and we pretty much stop there. And I don't know how many times I've heard the manufacturing engineers yell at me and say, you guys just throw it over the wall to us. You never think about how we've got to build it. This is where we can start thinking upstream, folks, and start caring about the manufacturing side of things and saying, yeah, what needs to be in this bill of material? What needs to be in it that I'm not going to model? I'm certainly not going to model powder coat or grease in there. Heck, we even talk about how you can model weld beads inside your parts and assemblies. Well, 
We're not going to go to that level, but we could certainly see the benefit of saying, hey, let's add that to PDM, and I can easily check it in, enter comments if I want, and now I've got that updated bill of material. It's setting in my vault. I've already checked it in. It's in one of my states in my workflow ready to be pushed through. So that's the thing to realize. Now a name bill of material, much like a SOLIDWORKS bomb, I can treat this almost as an entity or an item inside my vault, and it can go through workflow. It can get released. It's like, ooh, okay, you don't get that with a computed bill of material. It's along for the ride and inherent with your parts and assemblies and your drawings. You change those and drive it into a computed bill of material, but not in here. So now I can switch my view back, and maybe I pick on that drawing because we want to touch on that SOLIDWORKS bill of material. And sure enough, well, if I was on the assembly, we saw that bill of material, so we know that's our computed bomb, but now I can pick on my drawing, and if I click on the preview, I sure enough, I see that bill of material table on the face of the drawing, and that's the one that we were talking about earlier in PowerPoint that said, hey, if I modify this table in any way, shape, or form, I come over here to the bill of material tab and change to the SOLIDWORKS bomb, now you can see right off the bat, if nothing catches your eye more, I got item numbers and that format's matching what's on the face of my drawing. So now I'm getting, again, an exact push of that drawing bill of material through to PDM. So with that in mind, think about it. I've, got, I've given you three ways now inside PDM if we're using that mousetrap mentality where engineering's driving it, design is driving it, SOLIDWORKS and PDM are driving that design process. How do I get a more accurate bill of material out to the shop floor without really maybe putting a little more time than I should into some of those to engineering saying, well, geez, I'm not going to waste time modeling that powder coat and grease and e-coat, but manufacturing needs it, and I know I have a couple different ways of dealing with that inside PDM. So with that, let's, let's kind of summarize how far we've gone with PDM and bills of materials. Well, we know I can create bills of materials several different ways. I've got computed, SOLIDWORKS, and a couple different ways of saving both those. So I've got, I've got some ideas at my fingertips now, and hopefully you guys are starting to figure out a little bit more of where are you in the stack up of how you design and how you process a bill of material, and can either one of these tools help you? Obviously, it's there to support that design process if you're thinking like, say, a wood string product, that, that mouse trap. It's, it's a very traditional design process. It says it starts with engineering, sales or, or marketing drive engineering, and but they're not driving with a bomb. They leave that up to engineering to develop that bomb and push that out to the manufacturing floor. So if it's a traditional process to how you do business, PDM might be your, your, your go-to source for software. Okay, now let's switch the gears a little bit. Now we're going to go from PDM we're going to jump over to SOLIDWORKS Manage. Now, this is where I know we're going to lose a lot of folks because SOLIDWORKS Manage is relatively new. I mean, it's, it's, it's new in the, in, the, in the terms that Mike and I would speak because, you know, we know Kinesio goes back, or PDM goes back to the Kinesio days, and that's 20-plus uh, years now, a little over 20 years. So PDM has been around the block for a long time, and a lot of you folks are nodding your head saying, yeah, I'm used to PDM, but I don't have SOLIDWORKS Manage. Maybe there's a couple of you on the call that do have Manage because you're starting to push into a vein of needing more than what PDM can offer. And, and what I'm going to do is, for those of you that don't have Manage, this is where it's going to be a little tough to appreciate, but PDM is a very document-centric system. And you know that because it's all about physical documents. We put them in the vault, we check them in, we check them out, we revision control them, we run them through a workflow, and wow, we really get that, that data reuse and that collaboration, and PDM just knocks it out of the park. But it, it is a little restricted in that it is a document-centric environment. Well, when I go to manage, I kind of take the gloves off, and I say, all right, we're not document-centric anymore. But SOLIDWORKS Manage is, you heard me mention this earlier, it's bolted on to the back of PDM, and with it comes with an extra four pillars um, on top of the PDM pillar. So it really has five pillars or five table legs that it stands on. I love my analogies. Um, and we're going to focus on one of them, item management. We're going to drill into item management, and we're going to see what manage can bring to the table above and beyond what PDM can do. Now, obviously, I'm going to be touching briefly on maybe a little bit of project management. I'm not going to go into process management or dashboarding, but just suffice it to say, if any of those other pillars start to stand up, oh, wait a minute, what's this manage got to offer? 
you need to be getting a hold of your sales rep and they'll be chasing guys like Mike and me and, and we'll be doing demos and having some nice long conversations with you about what Manage has to offer. But let's dig into item management specifically, just in the vein of bills and materials. So what does Manage bring to the table? Well, we can build bills and materials in our projects. We can actually have projects inside Manage, like Gantt charts, everything. You know, we can put resources and time and stages and put tasks. I mean, I mean, it's a backbone of Manage to be able to build projects inside it. But we can build bombs inside our projects. We can also have bombs that, so to speak, stand on their own. I call them record bombs, where I can actually have multiple types of bombs in my, in my Manage environment. We're going to see these. And PDM bomb in Manage. Now this one, I don't know what the proper name is of it, but we're going to see this one play out. And it's the best definition I can give it is we can take a PDM bill of materials. Since we have ultimate synergy with our PDM vault in a managed environment, we can actually see from manage into our PDM environment and vice versa, but we're going to see how, how I could actually have a derivative of a bill of material coming from SolidWorks from PDM into manage and adapt it and grow it from there to support our company's business needs. So let's talk about the first one, project management. Like here, I've got a, a project, you know, 408, it's a widget project up. You can see over here on the left, I got planning tabs and to-do lists and all kinds of good information about it, and that, that's information for a demo on another day. But you can see I've got what I call, um, let me pick on the next tab here, what I've got are called variants. Notice that second circle loop. You see I'm highlighting a U.S. bomb, but right next to it I got that EU bomb. Maybe you're a company that manufactures globally. It's kind of the same product around the world, but maybe there's Rojas or a different compliance specification. So maybe some physical parts are actually different around the world, but maybe it's something as simple as assembly instructions or a user's guide or a user's manual that's in a different language. And I just have a different line item that goes in that the container when that product ship. Boy, I wish I could have a, a variant for, you know, one for U.S. or one for EU or one for how many ever countries you ship to. We could do that inside a project bill of material. Let's go into a record bill of material. Now, this is not being tied to a project. Maybe you like that, Joe, that whole project thing, we, we got that covered. We, we, we wail on Microsoft Project. Okay, great. Well, then we can build bills of materials all by themselves. Here I've got this bucket of parts. It's a kit bill of material inside Manage. And I can have several different types of bombs in Manage in these, in these areas. Well, for example, down here I've actually applied filters. And you can see I've got bomb kits. I've got shipping bombs. I've got standard bombs. I can have multiple types of bombs. And then when I apply these filters, that's all that would appear in my list. Like I've got the kit bomb filter applied. And that's why I'm only seeing kits up top. But the whole idea is that I can see those filters. And again, notice the variance. Here I've got yet a third variant, okay? And, and noticing I'm, I'm using, uh, I'll respect that I'm using just a country variant, but I want you to appreciate whatever your variant is, and you'll see one more example of a bill of material variant here in a few minutes. But I want you to appreciate that variants are ways to make a bill of material same as but different using that, you know, that manual, that user manual being in a different language. So we've got, right now we're looking at record bonds on top of our project bonds, all right. Now Joe talks about this whole SOLIDWORKS bomb being inside Manage because, well, PDM and Manage have ultimate synergy. So here I'm in a PDM vault view, and because I had Manage set up on my machine, you see I've got an extra tab called SOLIDWORKS Manage. Well, when you pick on that bad boy, you got a whole new row of tabs at your fingertips. It's not just the traditional PDM tabs, you know, the previews and the bills, materials, contains where used. You jump in and you can see where all of a sudden I'm into a bomb tab inside Manage. I'm not in, I mean, I'm inside PDM, but I'm really inside Manage looking at PDM Vault. And the cool part is, notice that I have a couple variants. And I like this one inside my, my PDM environment where I say, okay, I'm going to see my SOLIDWORKS bill of material and I'm going to have that manufacturing bill of material. And notice I've added that variant. And that SOLIDWORKS bill, that first one over to the left here, that's coming in straight from PDM. That's coming in from how it's built in SOLIDWORKS. But I had that manufacturing variant where I was able to go into this bomb, 
edit it and say, let's make a copy of it and let's call it the manufacturing bomb, this extra variant, and now I can add that powder coat, e-coat, paint, Loctite, whatever I want to add. I could do it inside Manage. I don't have to do it inside PDA. Maybe there's other things I want to do with this bill of material. But I want you to really appreciate we can get these variants going inside Manage and maybe that's the better place for you to reside rather than inside PDM utilizing the, the prior three methods we talked of earlier. So let's go ahead and see that side of it in action a little bit. We'll jump over here into my manage environment. Now, I've got a bunch of my projects up, and as you can see here, I've got filters. Just like we saw filters on my bill of materials, I've got filters for my projects. But also, we're going to get used to some new icons over here on the left. Like here, you can see the pencil marks are checked out. Okay, I've got tasks to do on these various projects. Conversation for another day. Uh, new mousetrap. Yeah, I was actually playing around with that one. Let's actually, that says there's a bill of material there, so let's actually open that one. Let's open that project and take a peek at that bill of material. So I see it down here. I just single clicked on it, and I can come down here to the bill of material tab. And I can see that U.S. bomb or that EU bomb, and I can see that in this case it happens to be the same bill of material. I could actually go in and edit this bill of material. I could open this bill of material as a new record or as a, as a new screen by itself, and I can select edit. And now I could literally start adding line items. Matter of fact, you can see where I've added several line items. I took that existing SOLIDWORKS assembly with all those sub-assemblies in it, and I added the thread locker, some no-slip tape, some powder coat, e-coat, placeholder for a spring. Look at that text line item, number eight. Maybe that's marketing or sales saying, well, a customer wants this extra component, and I want a placeholder for engineering to know there's going to be another part they got to draw. There's going to be something they got to fit. There's a little bit of a telltale sign there that we're not grabbing commodity items out of our vault. We're actually putting placeholders, just simple text lines in there. Again, how do you do business? Does something as simple as that little placeholder start to ring true with you and say, oh, that would take care of a terrible pain point? You know, these, these commodity items, these little yellow diamonds here, well, when I hit add to this bill of material, maybe you already create a list of all your commodities, of all your line items you like to add to your bonds. And again, if you're on the front end and it's sales or you're dealing with that kitchen cabinet mentality, maybe all these items are your commodities, standard size cabinets, and they're all going to be listed in here, and you're just dragging and dropping them into the bill of material. That's how sales could develop that bill of material for the customer without needing engineering. I mean, we went so far in this demo environment where we said, hey, let's have all these extra electrical components. Maybe you're a guy that says, well, I love using PCB, but I want to be able to just have all my files in an electrical components folder and I could just, they're not necessarily parts and assemblies and drawings like we think in PDM. They're just records of information. They're placeholders to say, let's create this bill of material. Maybe I want to have packaging. There's manufacturing usually applauding me saying, yes, somebody's finally remembering that this stuff doesn't magically ship on a truck in air. It gets put in cardboard boxes with bubble wrap and pallets. Please put that in the bill of material. How are you thinking on packaging this on a you know, typical pallet? So we can have that information. We can put this in a bill of material. It's as simple as just saying, okay, I'm going to take that box, I'm going to add it to my bill of material, and it's done. It's in my bill of material. There's item number nine. I can save it, close it, and I'm done. I've modified that bill of material. Now, I still have it checked out. I need to check it in, but I can easily modify a bill of material. So now let's jump over to that other type. This is obviously dealing in projects. Let's jump over to documents and records, and here's where we were seeing those bill of material kits we were talking about, those bucket of parts. You know, here's where Joe's looking at that kit, and I can actually open that bill of material. You know, I can open it from right inside here, inside Manage, and when I pick on the bill of material tab, there's those variants, and you can see I haven't made an EU or Canadian variant off of that U.S. one, but it's easy enough to do. If I check out this file and edit it, I can grow this by copying the U.S. bill of material and building from it. So, again, different ways to deal with PDM, or PDM, manage. So here, I can go ahead and check that out. You know, I can edit that bill of material now. And, or I can edit this one in particular, but let me save that one. I'll go to this one. I'll edit it, and maybe I want to say copy from. And I want to copy it from the U.S. Bill of Material. I can say copy. Now my EU bomb is the same as this, but maybe this is where I would check out or change out that thread locker for some other 
uh, thread locking additive. Maybe it's in the fasteners that we're going to be building for the, the European model, or maybe this is where I've got to add that, that user manual, the assembly guide that's, that's in Dutch or German or Italian, French, whatever. Again, this is where I can make those variants of different bills of materials that are starting from that SOLIDWORKS bill, starting from that U.S. bill. How are you going to deal with that? So I'm trying to give you some ideas here to think outside the box for what are some of your pains in bills of materials. How do we get into some of those? So we're talking about this. We're seeing how to get into our different uh, bombs. Now let's, uh, let's jump into <laughs> a little bit of the tools side of things. So, so far, we've been building an awful lot of bills and materials in PDM and building bills and materials inside Manage. But if we can't talk to the world, well, we've got a problem. Well, those of you that have PDM know that you can click on a bill of material and click on one button, and you can be staring at that as a CSV. But we can also go a step further. Now, I've talked about exporting. Let's briefly talk about comparing, and then we're going to get back into exporting. So i got two different bills of materials inside PDM, and those of you that have PDM know that I can compare tools. Well, I have a compare button inside PDM that lets me, when I select that icon, I can compare, and it'll show me just like it does in Manage, that red, yellow, or red, orange, green, and it'll let me compare any two versions within a single file. Notice I'm saying versions within a single file. When I'm inside Manage, Manage says, hey, I'm going to give you that same red, orange, green, red, yellow, green, depending on your color blindness like me. You're going to collect, select a compare tool, and then you're going to have that color coding option, but it's going to let you compare any versions between any two files. So I can pick two totally separate files and do a compare inside Manage. That's another strength that goes above and beyond what we can do currently in PDM. I always like PDM's compare tool, and I think it works very well for a lot of customers. But a lot of customers appreciate inside Manage being able to go that extra mile and say, I can compare any two physical files against any two versions in those files, and now I'm getting a little more graphic picture between them. So both tools, both PDM and Manage have the ability to compare bombs. We, we know we can search inside them just like we can in PDM and Manage. That search functionality is Windows-driven. But let's talk about the export side like I briefly did a moment ago. Now, inside PDM, those of you that have PDM Pro, you know you already have this ability or maybe you're already exercising this ability. But fundamentally speaking, this is not a, a function inside PDM standard, but inside PDM Pro, I can actually create an export rule. How do I want to send that bill of material out? Is there aliases? And, and how am I going to make that rule up and push information out? And then I'm going to call for it as an action in my workflow. So when I'm releasing files up here at the top, when I'm going from work in progress to release, I can push an action that says, hey, export data to XML. And at the end of the day, what do I get? I get an XML. It usually drops out on a network drive and it lands there for customer's ERP system to pick it up because why am I creating that bill of material in total? It's for another system usually to pick it up and run with it. I can manually export it as a CSV and manually push it over, and by gosh, that works great for a lot of customer's needs in PDM standard. But I want you to appreciate in PDM Pro, um, we can do this automatically. And in Manage, like you would hope, I don't want to say it's any more complicated, but we can absolutely create export rules inside Manage. And we can either manage, manually push out those XMLs, or we can use processes, which are very much like workflows inside PDM, to push those XMLs out. So we have the ability inside both tools to export those bombs, to push them out to your ERP system. Now, that creates a whole lot of conversations for most of you on the call. If you're an engineering mindset or a design mindset, you may be struggling with this XML, and maybe they want CSV, and there's a whole lot of maybes and a whole lot of questions, and we usually have to involve IT, and Mike and I will get in the tall grass with some of our programmers even trying to decipher what middleware may or may not be needed to help manage these bombs and push them beyond a PDM environment or push them beyond a SOLIDWORKS manage environment. But the nice thing is both tools are baked with some base functionality, at least get a very industry standard XML out of our ecosystem so that another ecosystem can receive it inbound and start to process it accordingly. So awful lot swimming around in your heads. I know we've been going at it close to 40 minutes now, so let's try and summarize it up. So obviously we've learned that bill materials can be created in a multitude of ways. We've seen them being created inside PDM. 
We've seen them being created inside Manage using those kit bombs or those shipping bombs, using those filters. We can create them inside our projects. There's a lot of different ways we learned how to create a bill of material. But the question really comes down to PDM offers multiple ways to build that bomb, but it's building that bomb and following somewhat of a traditional design process, much like we could think of if we were making a mousetrap. We in engineering are driving it based on sales needs and marketing needs, but we're driving the train and pushing that bill of material through. We step into manage, and now we start to offer multiple ways to build bills of materials long before the design process. You saw how we have ways of building bombs before we have a true engineering model for that customer. I mean, think about doing RFQs. I could, I got a pretty good idea what that customer wants. He wants one of these, two of these, three of those, and a few placeholders, and now all of a sudden I can start to generate a bomb that maybe a costing guy can put together some numbers on, and we never had to put a pencil to paper going old school in the engineering mindset. So manage starts to bring us up to being able to support that extra way of how are we going to process bills and materials. At the end of the day, both tools, PDM and Manage, offer necessary complements when it comes to comparing bombs or exporting bombs. So with that said, I'll ask you one last time, how do you do business? Questions I want you to think about and ask yourself, what is your design process? When are your bill of materials created? Does engineering drive that bill of materials? Is it like we talked, or are you maybe a hybrid between the cabinet design and, and a mousetrap mentality? How are you creating those bombs? What is that process? Maybe it wouldn't hurt to sit down with a piece of paper and scratch that out in the conference room on the whiteboard and try and noodle through that. Because at the end of the day, I'm curious how your bills of materials are being processed out for your business needs, and do any of those ancillary processes that we just showed you this afternoon inside PDM and Manage could stand up and really help you get rid of some pain points and, and make life a little easier for you in engineering or in design or being able to push those bill of materials a little more accurately and finitely through to ancillary departments, other ecosystems, other business units. So hopefully nobody's heads are swimming too bad. 